All right, we're here with Lee Leachman for this week's edition of No Better Bull and talking about feed efficiency in bulls and, and how it's measured. And Lee, I wonder if you could uh, tell us just a, a little bit first about why feed efficiency is important. Well, John, it's, uh, you know, feed efficiency today with the cost of corn is really a major driver. As we analyze data from Decatur County, it was the number one driver of feedlot profitability of what these ranchers' calves are worth when they go to the feedlot. And so it's a really important trade. If we look at the swine and poultry industry, they've uh, put a significant amount of their selection pressure on improving feed efficiency. And take chicken as an example, they've decreased the uh, dry matter feed required per pound of live weight by almost a third over the last 20 years. So certainly if we could do that in cattle, that would be pretty valuable. Yeah, it sure would. So how do we uh, measure feed efficiency in, in cattle when individual cattle have uh, such large differences, but we were typically measuring intake and such in, in groups. Yeah, I think the real challenge is that we, we historically only had group data. Today, with the computers and these advanced systems, we can actually measure individual feed intake. And so we have bunks where one animal eats at a time. The bunk weighs the feed under the bunk and says how much was there before the animal came. Then the animal puts its head in and eats and it reads its EID, and then it knows how much animals, how much feeds left when that animal departs. The real question is, what do we do with that data? We end up with how much they ate per day, we know how much they're gaining per day. What do we do with that data? And that's where there's a big discussion going on right now. There's, there's a measurement called residual feed intake, which is, did they eat more or less than we expected them to eat, given what they weighed and gained? And on that measurement, a negative is better. There's another measurement called residual average daily gain, which says given what they ate and weighed, did they gain more than they should have or less? Okay, then, then we look at a, a measurement that's called feed to gain, which is a ratio. I think when it's all said and done, my opinion, okay, just my opinion, there's a lot of debate on this, is that we're going to focus in on intake as a measurement. We already have an in, a measurement for growth. We'll focus in on intake. Each of these kind of ratio numbers, residual feed intake, residual gain, uh, feed to gain, is an imperfect measurement. You can't use it by itself, okay? Intake, you can't use by itself either. If you select the cattle that eat the least, I guarantee they'll gain the least. They won't make any money. <laughs> so we want the ones that eat less and grow more. Well, I was just about to ask that, and I know we've got right here some of these bunks that are measuring that uh, exactly. uh, the intake on these bulls here at, at the CSU's research center. But I was going to ask which which types of animals animals are the most desirable when you're looking at some of these different ways of of measuring feed intake. You know that depends on your perspective. I think if you were just a cow calf producer selling at weaning, if you didn't care what your calves did after you sold them you probably want the lowest RFI, lower intake cattle. But those cattle are going to perform less in the feedlot. The flip side of that, if you're a feedlot, you want the high residual average daily gain, the cattle that grow like crazy and, and get through the feedlot, or, or even our negative feed to gain cattle that convert the best, okay? You'd want those too, but you've got to watch those cattle because some of those cattle can be too big. And so I think at the end of the day, like any trait we look at, we can't single trait select, okay? We got to take this trait and balance it with others, and that'll be a discussion for another day on No Better Bull. Very good. Well, thanks a lot, Lee, and that's this week's edition of No Better Bull.